we are now at 1,069 rounds through through uh, this gun, and this is the Tesis um, Carry uh, Double Stack uh, 9mm 1911, and it is essentially it, it's a 2011. Uh, so I'm not going to mince words or kind of harp on the fact that there is no such thing as a non-staccato 2011. We've already been through all of that. Uh, we've discussed that before. Uh, but we've re reached a thousand mark milestone with this gun. Uh, and I think the last time I talked about this gun was maybe a couple months ago. Um, I'm not sure at what round count we were at, but now we're at 1,069 rounds. So as you can see here, the gun is clear. There's no magazine in there. There's no, no rounds in the, in the chamber. Uh, but you know, we can show clear if you want. There's nothing in there. So <clears throat> what we want to do is quickly discuss, uh, quickly discuss any, I guess, any major issues with the gun. I've, I've had none. Uh, there was the one failure when we first took it to the range where it misfed around. Uh, but out of 1,069 rounds, there was only one round that choked. And I was actually able to refeed it and shoot that round. Uh, so I'm not even sure that's an issue. And then I'm not sure where the issue lied. If it was a magazine issue, an ammo issue, or a gun issue. I don't know. Uh, but um, you really can't get much better than that. I guess the only way you can be, I guess, better would be to have no fails. Uh, uh, I don't think I've had any 1911 that had that least amount of failures in a thousand plus rounds. Uh, I've had, I mean, my next best 1911 would be the, I don't want to say the Bull Armory. Um, it had several failures, um, over the course of eating a thousand rounds. And I, I think we're at like 15, 1600 rounds out of that gun. Uh, and we haven't had any failures in probably six, 700 rounds through that gun now. So the the thing that's typical of 1911s and 2011s is that if you're going to have failures, it's probably going to be at the beginning of your ownership with the gun. Uh, and, you know, some people, you know, usually it's gunsmiths and 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 so-called uh, instructors. Um, and, I, and I say that because not all instructors know everything. Uh, they want to pretend they do, but... You know, just as it was as with anything in life, um, there are good and bad, um, and not everyone is on the same level as it come, yeah, as it pertains to instructors or anything else. So, uh, a lot of instructors, and, and the same goes with gunsmiths too, and uh, armorers and things like that. They say that there's no such thing as a break-in period. That's, that's not my, that's not been my experience. Like, as I said, um, my typical experience and I, I've, I've owned various 1911s and I haven't shot them for 50 years or anything like that. I'm not 90 years old. Um, but, but in the end I do have experience and my experience is that if, if a 1911 or a 2011 is going to choke, it's going to choke. Uh, during the first few range visits, um, that is exactly why some gun makers will not troubleshoot any issues with the gun until you shot, and, and, and the number is usually arbitrary, uh, 250, I've heard 250, I've heard 300, I've heard 400, I've heard 500, 500 rounds through the gun before reaching out to them and saying that you have a problem. Because nine times out of 10, what's gonna happen is this. 
the gun's going to start wearing in all of those metal parts, you know, because they're new and they're not meshed together. And, and the fact that the cheaper 1911s aren't, I mean, I mean they're not custom guns. So uh, there's going to be minimal, a minimal amount of hand fitting. So those parts usually have to wear in. And for the most part, they usually wear in, you know, uh, with this particular gun, I'm not sure if either the tolerances are open enough to where there were no issues or um, maybe TSIS is a um, CNC machining uh, it, it is to the standard of where they can guarantee as good a fit as possible while still keeping the tolerances somewhat open. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm, I'm just kind of musing, you know, there. I'm, I'm kind of thinking out loud. Uh, but again, I, I haven't had any issues with the gun other than that one time. Um, yes, there was an issue with the, the, the optics cut, uh, but I'm still able to use the, the site and, you know, place a, a shim on the, on the site to get the, uh, the site to fit, uh, fit properly. Um, so that, so, you know, I've mitigated a, that issue or, or created a workaround, right? Uh, but gun is still, the gun is still, I mean, it hasn't loosened up any, it hasn't tightened up any, um, there is some slide play from, you know, From side to side left to right wobble um i don't expect it to be super tight for what it is you know it's it is a budget-minded gun um so my my higher tier guns uh 1911s do not wobble in this fashion uh but that's that's one of the things that you're paying for you're paying for that additional hand fitting uh of parts so that wobble isn't isn't necessary, and and to be honest, uh, this wobble isn't key. I mean, it's not going to affect the accuracy of the gun. Um, but uh, one of the problems I've been having again, I mentioned the uh, the optics uh, cut being kind of weird. Um, there is also so. The last 200 rounds, so the last range visit, we shot 200 rounds to get, I wanted to make sure, I knew I was close to 1,000, but I wasn't quite sure exactly how much. I knew it was, if I if I shot at least 200, I knew that I would get it. You know, I'd break that threshold, right? And I did. Um, but in that 200 rounds, um, this part of the gun uh, did start tearing into the flesh of my, my hand. Um, so I'm not sure if it's going to show on camera here, but on this side, it's blended. So the, the left, uh, safety lever, uh, the left thumb, thumb safety is, I guess it's, uh, what do you call it? Uh, it's tapered, uh, probably, probably to prevent rough edges from pushing into the media of your hand. Uh, what's what's odd is that they blended this one, but they didn't blend this one. Uh, and I think I mentioned that when I first bought the gun as well. So uh, in my opinion, the, the fix for me, I'm thinking about finding a uh, uh, maybe a Wilson thumb safety or something that'll fit in there uh, that's one-sided. Um, so I, I don't need this side here, so, um, I could get by with just one side, uh, that would, that would get rid of this problem. Or I could just take this apart, take this piece out and blend it myself with a Dremel and then, uh, blue it, you know, add some bluing, uh, compound to it, uh, wipe it off and that, that should do it. So either way, but that is it. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this. I could put it to the side and move on to other things, which I, which is what I thought I was gonna do. But I do. I decided to uh, 
buy some extra parts. Uh, so we have two recoil springs on the way. Uh, I ordered two from EGW. I think uh, a 14 pound and a 16, no, a 12 and a 14 pound spring. Uh, I didn't want to get any lighter than that um, because I, I don't want to mess up the reliability of the gun. So those springs are more for exper experimentation sake. We'll test those out because uh, when I last visited the range, although my grip discipline and my gunmanship has actually improved a lot, I still am somewhat challenged by dealing with recoil on this gun. And so I wanted to see if a recoil spring would help lessen that. Um, and really what I want to be able to do is have it lessen enough to where I can quickly get back on, uh, on target. So I want minimal bob. I want minimal, uh, I want a minimal amount of the gun kicking back, you know, kicking up. And I do believe a recoil spring will help with that, a lighter recoil spring. So we're going to try that. Um, that's one of the reasons why I got this gun. This is, a, you know, something I can kind of uh, experiment with. And, you know, if the recoil springs, if I'm not happy with those, I'll put the OEM spring back in. Uh, because I've been thinking about, you know, I've talked about doing, you know, enrolling in some training sessions and I wanted at least a, you know, a duty size gun. Uh, I'm speaking like if I was going to use a 1911, I wanted it to be a five inch. Um, I don't have a five inch nine, uh, uh, nine millimeter 1911. Uh, this will be one of the, I mean, this would be a close second. So, I mean, as I, I mean, it's already mid year. Uh, so if I'm going to take courses, it will have to be soon. I don't see myself purchasing another gun until sometime next year. So if I'm going to take a training course, it would have to be this or something of this, this size. You know, I do have some other Glocks, um, and some other polymer guns. Uh, but I, I did not envision taking a, uh, 1911 to a, to a course. Um, so I'm thinking on taking maybe maybe taking this one to the course solely because I've had no issues with it. Uh, and if that's the case, maybe I shouldn't be mucking around with it. But again, if if I find that I don't like um, the lighter recoil springs, or if I find that it's causing reliability issues, it's a simple matter of swapping out, you know, reversing what I did. Um, I'm not throwing away the OEM spring. I can just throw it back in into the gun. Uh, but that is the plan. I mean, the gun is, is, is great. Uh, my parting thoughts would be that if I had to do it again, I would, and don't take this wrong. If I had to do it again, you know, if, if, if I could go back in time or, or if, you know, it was groundhog day and I got booted back in the time, uh, and I had that, you know, a chance to decide whether or not to buy this gun again, I, I might not. Um, again, there's nothing wrong with the gun, but um, maybe I'm a little bit spoiled or maybe I'm more of a realist than some other folks, but I think I was spoiled. I'm spoiled by the, the higher tier guns that I have. Uh, the Bull Armory SAS II um, and uh, even the, the Alpha Foxtrot, uh, they're just, higher quality you can feel it you can see it and even when you're you're shooting the gun i mean they're more accurate with this gun uh than this gun and they're just i think they're just the sum of their parts are greater than the sum of the parts of this gun this one doesn't quite measure up i mean it looks good and it fits fits well enough it's a 2011 it has no mem um but for some reason, all of what I just mentioned still doesn't quite make this gun add up in a fashion where it's comparable with um, uh, my two other uh, mid mid tier guns. Um, and again, I, I when I bought this gun, I already knew that. 
but it, sometimes I, I think, you know, looking back, I was like, did you just waste money on this gun? Because, I mean, it's not doing anything better than the other guns that I already have. And, and, and I thought about that maybe um, a month or so after buying this gun. But, uh, I mean, that, that thought is still there. Um, so, I don't know. I, it's not a, a gun that I would be willing to throw tons of money into. I mean, what I have done is uh, I have replaced the hammer spring, the mainspring. Um, what else? The sear. And really, that's it. I haven't done anything to it. Like, like I'm not dumping like a bunch of money into uh, a T-SIS 2011. Like I read some of these other guys in the forums and uh, in the subreddits, uh, I, I, I don't have a need to do that, you know, um, and it's really because I already I already have some some nice guns. Why why do I need to experiment with this um, for a bedside gun or one of those um, types of guns where you just want to beat on, not worry about. You know, would I take a $2,000 1911 to a training course? I'm not sure I would. And if that's the case, I mean, I have. I took the, the ultralight, the Bull Armory ultralight to a course. Um, but I think this one would serve better because it's a bigger gun. Um, uh, the grip texturing is better. Uh, there are certain things that this gun is better at but I think it's just due to the fact that it, it's a bigger size um, if I had to I could probably train around this this gun um, so so really there's nothing wrong with it it just doesn't stand out as well when you own something that that is is built better uh, and and really I was gonna say that costs more because really that's when, when a gun costs more, more than likely it, it's, it's, it's built better. Um, and especially when you're talking about the price gap between this and the Alpha Foxtrot that I own and the, uh, the Bull Armory SAS 2 that I own. So, I mean, it's when they designed this, I don't think they designed it to compete with $2,000 guns or even $1,500 guns. I think they just designed this using their know-how. So a lot of these parts carry over from their single stacks. Uh, really only the only thing they had to do was they had to build the frame and, and grips and kind of make those those parts gel well. Um, and maybe the trigger since it's, it's something that they typically didn't do up until this point, right? So there are certain things that they had to kind of uh, starts from, from scratch with, but a large portion of the gun that, that you know, they didn't. So um, it's good to have other offerings, even if they're cheaper. Um, for what this gun is, it's outstanding. Um, but you always have to keep in mind that you, know, you have to keep things relative. And that's what I'm doing. Uh, I can compare all of my 1911s together, but I will never say that all of them are exactly equal. Even though some of them, like if I compared all of the 1911s, they're, they, you know, most of the parts would be swappable. Um, and, you know, I wouldn't have a problem kind of uh, maybe uh, swapping in some, some uh, non-MIM um, ignition parts and, and, and things like that, right? But that will, I mean, factoring out that, I'm, really what I'm talking about is comparing OEM to OEM. Um, anyone can kind of make something work better. Uh, but if you, the, 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 the more fair comparison would be to compare uh, like guns in a fashion where they're coming straight from the factory. Um, so um, in that regard, if I compare these to all of my other guns that are similarly priced or lower, 
this would be a, a, a I guess, a top, you know, it would get my top vote. You know, it would get high praise for me. But when you start kind of comparing the, this to a gun that is double the price, um, that, that kind of, that comparison doesn't work out that well for me. Uh, but we can talk all day about that. And we're at the 20 minute mark. And uh, this is rather long. I've been struggling to kind of keep my videos short or as short as possible. And uh, I, I failed a bit in that regard here. I was, I was aiming for a 15 minute discussion. We're at 22 minute mark now. So the longer we talk about it, the longer this video gets. So we will end the video here. Um, and maybe once we get those springs in, what, what I'll do is uh, I'll do an, a, a short video kind of explaining the differences uh, after taking that out to the range. Uh, just to keep, you know, the thesis, uh, uh, I guess the, the topic of thesis still going. I mean, I still own the gun. I'm probably not going to shoot it as much uh, since we've crossed that thousand mark threshold. But um as I try new things with it, I'll keep you guys up to date. All right.